you are watching the african boss show please subscribe and scroll around the channel leave your comments below and thank you for your support zahara the south african singer songwriter whose soulful voice and heartfelt ballads earned her platinum selling albums and multiple accolades in her country and across africa died in a hospital in johannesburg she was only 36 years old zahara was born bulelwa Nkutukana on november 9th 1987 in the village of pumulani in eastern Cape, south africa and grew up listening to songs her mother played on the radio before discovering a love of singing i wonder what uh, the parents were playing at that time that inspired the young zahara she became the lead singer of her sunday school choir at six now, this is a common story with with africans mostly that they trace their roots to the church it's it's quite good actually isn't it but it's very common. Zahara be began her singing career basking in the streets of her hometown. She said she had never received any formal musical training and had taught herself the guitar. I, I would, you know, the first time I heard her, I thought she was like a trained singer. So to say that she was a um, self-taught was just amazing. I wasn't overly surprised because then she actually said this in an interview. She said, there is a difference between a gift and a talent. And I am gifted, not talented, and that is absolutely true. Her father gave her the stage name Zahara. You know, I was reading somewhere that she had given herself the name Spinach when she was uh, younger. And I thought, yeah, Spinach would be kind of cute when you're little, but uh, I think Zahara is better as you get older. Uh, Zahara means I bloom in flower in Arabic, beautiful name indeed. Uh, there is another Zahara running around in the newspapers, a bait not of her own making better that's brad pete and angelina jolie's adopted child from ethiopia while zahara was performing on the streets of east london she was supported by tk and caesar of ts records please keep that name because we're going to talk about him who signed her to his label who has become an important part of her story this began her journey in the music industry her music has been described as a mixture of various musical styles popularized by tracy chapman and indy array I just think that uh, it's it's they play folk music, isn't it? And this is really an accurate description of the musician. If you put those three together, that would be quite a side, wouldn't it? They are quite similar, and their backgrounds are quite similar in the way they got into music. I'm talking of Tracy Chapman. I think she's the greatest of all time. I remember that song "Fast Car" when she performed at Wembley Stadium at Mandela's 70th birthday in 1988. She wasn't meant to perform. Well, she was just uh, on the standby list, and then it happened that Stevie Wonder, you know, being the Stevie Wonder, uh, they had not set his set properly. So then they needed someone to just fill up for uh, about two songs, and um, uh, because she only because Tracy Chapman had only the guitar, so her set was quite easy to set up. And they said, "Oh yeah, go sing, Tracy. It's your you know just say, sing something, keep the crowds occupied." And as they said, the rest is history. If I was a motivation speaker, I'd be like, you know, just be ready anytime with your gift. Just be ready. You know, when the opportunity comes up, you gotta go for it. But I'm not a motivational speaker. Speaking of Mandela, Zahara had the privilege of singing in front of Mandela at some point in her career. Uh, her albums, Loliwe, 2011, Zahara's debut album, Loliwe, was a monumental success. Going double platinum, the album's title track became an instant hit, showcasing her unique voice and storytelling ability. This album not only catapulted her to fame, but also set a high standard for her subsequent, subsequent works. You know, when you talk about her, when you talk about Zahara, I just always think of that album, Loliwe. That's when everybody knew who she was, Zahara, Loliwe. Beautiful, beautiful song. And then she followed that up in 2013 with the album uh, Pendula, and then Country Girl in 2015. I believe that she sang this song after her brother died. And it's one of the best-selling albums, if I'm not mistaken. And then Mugodi was in 2017, Nkabayam was 2021 and then uh, a live album in 2022 that that was to be her last album as Zahara's voice became a soundtrack to the south african experience weaving a tapestry of hope and resilience amid the compresses compresses of life you know every country has a story south african has lots of stories you know you've got the, the interesting past with apartheid economic fight now because you know you have the the inequalities and injustices and all that and also you've got the beautiful side of south africa the land the people 
Uh, so you always need in a country to have someone who's going to do that job of, you know, bringing all that together and expressing those views uh, through singing. And Zahara was doing that very, very well. So uh, that also made her an advocate for the voiceless. She spoke out against injustice and inequality, using her music to champion the causes she held dear to her heart. But music also became her burden with her naivety in the industry routinely being used to exploit her. She turned to the bottle for solace, which never came. So anyway, she turned to alcohol, basically. And apparently she died of alcoholic liver disease. Uh, this is the thing though, sometimes some people drink. You know, you've got your drunk uncles who are old as anything, but they've been drinking for, you know, since ever you were born, they were, they were on the bottle, but they're still existing, they're still going. Yeah. Uh, but then you get someone uh, who you now drinks, but not too much, and then they get alcoholic liver disease and die. It's just, just the way the world works, isn't it? We're not built the same. Uh, last month, she had been hospitalized, according to the family, who indicated she was experiencing liver complications. Cultural Minister Zizi Kodwa said on Tuesday the government had been assisting her family for some time. Four years ago, she had opened up about her fight against alcohol addiction. Our conversations about Zahara's royalties have become a focal point on social media and in the news since her passing. Zahara, who um, passed away at 36 years of age, had been vocal about the financial disputes with her former label TAS Records, which she alleged owed her millions in unpaid royalties and performance fees. It reminds us of Makaza. Makaza was also speaking about that, like her deal wasn't good for her, she got little money and she was fighting to sort of uh, restructure her deal. This happens across the music industry, it happens a lot. And remember TLC, the girl band TLC, I mean, they, were, they were cooking it like in 1995. They announced to the world that we are broke. Remember at uh, some award ceremony they said, we don't have any money, we are broke. The previous year, 1994, they had produced one of their best albums, uh, Crazy Sexy Coup. Uh, they had songs like Creep and Waterfalls and, you know, those classics. And they were really doing well, uh, but they were being ripped off. I'm um, so glad that the uh, still going. Uh, Lefta obviously died and then t Booze and Chili still sing. And one of them has lupus, but they're still on stage and doing their thing. And that story ended up well. But mostly we all know that uh, it's a musician who is at the receiving end. Uh, it's mostly the, the record companies who get away with it because they, they know how to structure these, these deals, the, the finer prints of it. In a series of candid discussions across various platforms, the 36-year-old singer has openly addressed the issue of being underpaid despite the commercial success of her albums. Zahara's career with TSA Records saw the release of three successful albums, Lolly Were Pendula and Country Girl, before the label closed down in 2017. So actually, TSA Records folded in 2017. The relationship between the artist and the label soured over financial disagreements. In 2019, Zahara first made public claims against TSA Records, TS Records insisting that she was underpaid for her performances, record sales, and royalties. Uh, some of the videos are pretty distressing. Uh, they've been you know, going around in the social media. But DJ Sboo and Caesar, the figures behind TSA Records, have previously denied these claims actually in, in 2021. Sibusiso Liope, I can deal with Sibusiso uh, Liope. I don't know whether I'm saying DJ Sboo uh, correctly. But they rejected her claims. He, he actually announced on Massive Metro that Zahara was financially stable when they parted ways and even owed money to the label. And recently speaking to News, News Luma Africa, DJ Spoo explained that Zahara was not working with them in the past few years. We know that because they, she left them in 2015 and also they folded in 2017. He also mentioned that the label had supported Zahara during her health and financial struggles. We made sure that she owns her own publishing, which she does with Sheer Music Publishing. She applies her royalties directly into her bank account and they've done so ever since we have been working together and also with our current people who distribute our music catalog universal music we also made sure instead of universal music paying tsa records that they will distribute the funds to her he added additionally dj sibu emphasized that there are documents with contracts showing the allegations made are not true according to him these legal documents provide evidence contradicting the allegations of underpayment so it's a case of who who said she said isn't it the musician is always at the, at, the, at the receiving end of things 
it's so frustrating to see your music or something that you've done, your talent being exploited and you're in this position that you just can't do anything about it. Uh, you're broke and people are still making millions of your talent, but because you signed something, uh, you just can't get to it. Uh, I bet it's frustrating. And if you have to get to it, it's the resources is not worth it you have to pay expensive lawyers and this and that and you just can't do anything about it it's it's a hopeless position in a statement posted on zahara's instagram account her family said she was a pure light and even purer at heart in this world a beacon of hope a gift and a blessing to us and countless people around the world fans have been grieving and sharing fond memories of her on social media she left us with such beautiful music that just encapsulates everything isn't it and the story of zahara is a tragic story of a beautiful beautiful soul which i feel the industry pushed her to the blink and ultimately drove her to her grave i think her soul was this pure singer from the village who just wanted to sing beautiful music with the guitar it seems that's that's how she came across to me from the interviews that i've seen i think some people in the music industry some musicians they seek fame fortune the lights the glamour the drama and they thrive in that environment that's all they wanted uh, but others it just they just want to sing but it's that monster that catches them and consumes them and they just can't handle it uh, people are built differently leave your comments below and may her soul rest in peace and i'll thank you and i'll see you in my next video Thank mm -hmm. you.